Hi, welcome back. In today's session, we will talk about the main topic that has granted the peridynamics formulation such a big uh, popularity, and that, that is damage. So please stay in and let's start. So let's get started. In peridynamics, as we have seen so far, we have a particle P which interacts with all the particles around inside a radius delta P uh, through bonds. Yes. And these bonds are created as in here. This particle Q with this particle P is one bond. Then this particle uh, Q prime, let's call it like that. With this, this is another bond. Then this, we have another bond. Then we have another bond and so on for the rest, right? And this is the initial configuration. We call it initial configuration because we have no, this is the, the where the solid uh, was originally positioned. Whereas this formulation here, sorry, this configuration here is the current configuration and this implies after we have pushed or applied some force or displacement into the body. Yes, so here we have the same bones uh, marked, but now in the current configuration. Now, if we want to simulate damage, we know we need to introduce damage in a bond level and why is that because we are working with bonds in the peridynamic formulation so how are these bonds uh, damage introduced the first thing you can notice here on the left hand side is a variable defined as s which is the bond stretch and the bond stretch can be understood as the bond how much the bond deform from its final configuration with respect to the initial configuration. So if you have a bond like this that elongated to this uh, position and it was originally in this size, you can say from, from very basic theory that you have the final length minus the initial length yes divided by the initial length and this would give you some quantity of the stretch of this particular line let's call it like this well in peridynamics this is also this same concept is actually applied and it is uh, used but now for def defining the bonds such as here the Y defines the bond current configuration, uh, meaning this, this here minus the bond initial configuration, which is this one here, divided by the bond initial configuration, which is again this one here. And this will give you a stretch, a stretch of that particular bond. Yes. So now let's say that you, we want to represent the behavior of the bond stretch. Okay, we can plot in this case a 2D graph in which in the x-axis we have the bond stretch and in the y-axis we have the bond force. Yes, so let's say you, are st you start to stretch the bond and the force at the same time starts to increase. The more the bond you apply the more stretch you apply to the bond the bond the more bo the more force the bond will experience and why is that because the bond doesn't want to break right it's resisting to the force to the stretch that you are applying to it that's why the force is increasing but let's say that there is a critical point in which suddenly you apply more stretch than that and then you experience something drastically with the force and the force just drops meaning it goes to zero 
and this physically would mean that suddenly the the bond just broke there is not any other force uh, holding it the bond together so now you can just simply continue elongating the the bond but the force is no longer present because the bond just broke and we can call this parameter in this case is zero but this could be a critical stretch where the bond would break right so if we look at this in terms of the damage we have that the bond initially when it was increasing its stretch it had a uh, zero damage meaning it was completely healthy and nothing was really happening at all but then when it reached this critical stretch suddenly the damage was equal to one meaning 100 percent damage and the bond just broke and the force was no longer present right so if we look and apply this concept into our bond damage we can see here that the damage of this particular bond uh, we call we can say this bond which is the same in the current configuration as this bond uh, would be equal to one if the stretch of that particular bond would be bigger or equal than a critical stretch as zero and it would be zero otherwise right so when you would have this uh, damage here and and now if we wanted to calculate the bond force we know we could apply a parameter like as it is here one minus d multiplied by the bond uh, by the bond uh, constitutive model t yes which is the bond force and then we could say okay if the damage is equal to zero then this would be equal to t and the bond force is still going on but what happens when the damage is 100 percent this d will be equal to one and the bond force will no longer be present yes but now let's say we want to visualize this damage and this is something very very important to understand because we have so far uh, applied damage to the bond level and this is perfect but now if we want to really visualize it and let's say uh, for instance in this uh, picture here we have a crack propagating which we can see in colors like the red the red color is where the damage is equal to one and here in the blue it's the damage is lower but here we can clearly see that there is a crack that is propagating propagating and it is even branching how can we actually visualize this and to do this visualization in peridynamics uh, there's something quite important to understand and this visualization that and uh, that is that this visualization that we are looking at here it's generated at the bond level but it is visualized in the particle level so meaning here the colors are attributed to the particles and not to the bonds yes so what what do i mean by that okay so imagine we have here uh, this crack propagation pattern that i was mentioning before i will put it in i will put it into uh, as, a, as a road in between yeah so we have here particles one particle then we have another particle then we have another particle then another particle and so on right so we have this path made this damage path or this damage crack made of particles yes but we also have particles in the domain around right here 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 sorry for the not very nice drawings i apologize for that uh, here 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 right so we have many many other particles around the crack and here we we have our domain right so now the damage that we are looking at is at the particle level and the bond and the damage that we were calculating previously is between it's at the bond level 
meaning the connections between let's say if we select this particle the connections of this one with this this one with that this one with that and so on right so how do we get the damage in this particular or specific particle and this is something that we can compute here as phi so this phi will be measuring a fraction on this particle and this fraction will be looping let's see the denominator here will be looping over all the damage bonds over all the bond uh, damage properties of each of the bonds that are uh, encompassing uh, that this particle is encompassing in its horizon yes so let's say here that we have four bonds one two three four so it will be looping over four bonds and let's say two of them are broken let's say this one here and this one here is broken so in the first case looping in the first particle it will find that the damage is uh, one then the other bond is also damaged then the particle is also one then the other will be zero and then the final one will be zero these two are the two bonds that are damaged and these other two are zero because they are not damaged when each of these are being multiplied by the volume and then they are divided by the average the volume of all the that all the bonds that compound compound this uh, horizon so in this sense if we are uh, roughly multiplying we will have two bonds divided by over four and of course this one is being multiplied by their corresponding uh, volumes this will give you in average 0 0.5 uh, damage in the particle yes this is the 0 0.5 that you actually see in the particle level as illustrated in here so this is how you can calculate the damage so now uh, just a quick uh, view on this i would like to show you how this is done in peridig and for doing so you can go here to the folder in the src folder you can go to the damage folder and inside the damage folder you will see the critical stretch damage model which is the one that it is mostly employed in pervy dynamics for brittle fracture then looking here into we have the initialization so we have here the compute damage and in the compute damage we will see how in the first part it will start computing the damage through the bonds yes here is looping for one particle and then it's starting to loop for all the particles that correspond to the horizon of this particle here so it's creating the bond it's computing here the current distance of the bond minus the initial distance of the void divided by the initial distance of the bond which is the stretch and if this stretch is bigger than a critical parameter the damage is equal to zero otherwise it's equal to uh, otherwise the damage is equal to one i'm sorry and otherwise it, it is stays the same yes and here it is closing this loop uh, that started in here yeah but interestingly the second part it is actually computing the damage at the particle level that is the one that i was mentioning to you before and here what it's doing it's again looping over all all the particles then looping over all the bonds and then it is accumulating the damage per particle so as in here when the damage when it goes out of this loop of the of the of the bond loop then it evaluates the total damage will be equal to again the total damage divided by the initial the number number of neighbors and this value will be assigned 
to the particle itself self this is the 0.5 in the example i was showing you before so this is how in paradigm it is calculated the damage now when you have the damage computed uh, it will be stored and we will go then it will then go to the material evaluation which you can find in the folder material and let's open for instance the peri the um, one which is the elastic.cxx the linear peridynamic solid which i will explain you next time but here the important part is if you go uh, here to the to the force calculation since the bond damage was saved as i was showing to you before when this value is equal to one then this will make this expression zero and the bond force is simply no longer considered so i hope you like uh, this video um, please subscribe to the channel and uh, let me know your comments and if this was uh, clear or not clear please let me know as well all right thank you so much and see you next time